But one of the things that I found is that you know, our students were, were very enthusiastic about bio-related research. And we have a biomolecular engineering concentration that's in our program. And about 25 to 30% of our enrollment, and this is for the past 10 years at least, about 25 to 30% of that enrollment has been in that biomole concentration. And there was a lot of interest in biomole. And so and there were a lot of interactions and discussions and conversations that I got to have with our students um, who were expressing interest in bio, right? And so at the same time, I'm trying to you know, build a research program. And, and so you know, I learned and continue to learn a ton from the students uh, that I interact with and, and the enthusiasm that they bring day in and day out to their program, to their academic program, but also to the research activities that we're involved in is, is really an infectious and it's very motivating. And there were certain things that I, that I knew because I'd been in that environment in graduate school and been in that environment um, biotech wise um, with the startup company that I worked for. Um, but it took me a, a little bit of time to really kind of say, all right, what, what am I good at? Right, so really trying to draw from those prior experiences and those strengths um, in an effort to move towards um, building research. And so we started out where a lot of our research was focused on uh, gene-based therapies and really trying to draw closely from uh, the work that I was doing with a startup company. And, and that still continues to be a theme that's part of our research. Mm -hmm. um, but there was also through collaboration really and, and interactions with, with Dr. Arce and others in our department um, and our students, um, a theme that tended to keep percolating um, was the whole topic of wound healing. Mm -hmm. um, and so at the time I knew nothing about wound healing, right? <laughs> and, and I think that's one of the things that I really enjoy about a, a faculty position is you get to just, you know, you get to tinker and you get to ask these questions, I wonder what if. Um, and so there was a lot of interest that was being expressed in the wound healing area. Um, and, and Dr. Stephanie Jorgensen uh, and now, um, you know, she, she was uh, in our undergraduate program and, and finished that and, and did uh, research, undergraduate research with Dr. R.C. and me uh, related to transdermal drug delivery. And so maybe take a patch and you position it on the outside of the skin and you maybe consider ways that that drug might get into the skin itself. And then she transitioned into our direct admit PhD program, right? And she was, she was running, you know, full force ahead and doing all this great stuff and, and, and you know, and we're learning from her in the process, but this whole topic of wound healing uh, came up. Uh, a, a time and time again, and so ultimately through her leadership uh, and enthusiasm for the research that she was doing, the whole aspect related to early phase models of wounds. So if one thinks about dermal wounds, and so injuries to the skin for example, there's, it's typically described with four processes or four stages. And so the first thing is just hemostasis whereby I've got to stop the bleeding. All right, so that will be the first phase, and typically that's on the order of minutes time scale. But then that's followed by three other phases. And so there's an inflammatory phase where basically the body's saying, all right, we need to start repairing this, this wound, this injury. And in order to do that, we need to have a clean environment. Mm -hmm. And so the body is doing these things uh, to actually help us clean that environment. And then there's a particular type of cell that's referred to as a fibroblast. And so a fibroblast in the third phase, uh, um, which is referred to as a proliferation, fibroblasts go into that wound site mm -hmm. and they proliferate. They, they grow um, and they just, do what they do and one of the things that they do is they make collagen. So about 70% of our skin is comprised of collagen. Mm -hmm. right? And so that's the third phase. The fourth phase, the, um, the fibroblasts themselves are telling the collagen that they made, hey, we need you to turn this way or we need you to turn that way, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And so there's this whole aspect associated with remodeling. Mm -hmm. All right, and so the idea, if one looks at a scar uh, in a microscope, what you'll find is that the scar tissue kind of looks like this, it's more parallel. Mm -hmm. If you look at a non-scar, normal tissue, it's more like this with the collagen. And so that whole process of remodeling and telling that collagen which way to go was very, very important. Uh, but Dr. Jorgensen had, had done a, a literature review. We, we had done a literature review to get together and um, looked at those four phases. And we ultimately looked at all the mathematical models in you know, the past um, 20 years or so uh, that had been done that relates to these four phases of the wound healing process. And we connected these models to the phases and one of the deficiencies that we saw in the literature was that there wasn't a lot of modeling related to the earliest phases of the wound healing process. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of the hemostasis phase. And so certainly there's a lot relating to the, the, the clotting cascade, mm -hmm. but in terms of like the fundamental um, um, equations or models that we might think about in engineering, there wasn't a whole lot of those. And so we started down that path because we thought that there was an opportunity for us to contribute. And so, you know, since then we've been developing these physical models mm -hmm. of early phase wounds. We've been developing mathematical models and simulation based models of these early phase wounds. 
And when we talk about what we're doing in developing a physical model, um, we're, we're keeping it as simple as we possibly can. And so there's two primary ingredients that we work with. Uh, one's referred to as fibrinogen, and the other one's referred to as thrombin. And so thrombin is an enzyme that will cleave fibrinogen into fibrin. And those fibrin molecules will orient, they'll cross-link in some type of way, and so you ultimately get some type of porous material. Now, physiologically, what's happening in our body when that happens is there's chemical sensors that are going into this porous media. Eventually, there's those fibroblasts that go into this porous media, and the fibrin itself begins to be broken down and replaced with collagen. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're really focusing on what are the characteristics of that early phase wound as it relates to maybe the ability of a molecule to transport through that porous media, as it relates to the structure mm -hmm. of, that, um, of that wound domain. And so we're using things like a, real, a rheometer mm -hmm. uh, that we have in, in the building here. We're using the absorbance detector that you know, we talked about the cricket sound that you might hear in the background there. And, and so that, that absorbance detector is basically, as these gels form, they go from a clear liquid more so towards a translucent or an opaque gel type material. So not quite solid, but, but a gel type material. Mm -hmm. There's lots of ways that, that wounds manifest. Um, and so, you know, from a traditional, uh, you know, I've, I've cut myself on a piece of paper, right? Something like that, or, you know, I've had an, um, a mishap with a tool. Um, th those kind of things that I think we all kind of um, have those kind of situations that occur, right? And we want that tissue to heal in a way that, the, um, that, that maybe there's minimal scarring and for sure that the, the, tissue, the tissue still functions the way we want it to function. Um, but we also recognize that there's a lot of other situations that, that can be encountered. So for example, in diabetes. Um, and diabetes, which is prevalent you know, in the state of Tennessee and really prevalent you know, worldwide, it's, it's, it's a major health problem. Um, a common problem will relate to circulation of blood um, and associated with that is the fact that if someone does have some type of injury, it's hard for that injury to heal, mm -hmm. right? Um, also, you look at things like um, um, battle injuries, for example, and there's, um, there's lots of complications associated with that and um, uh, just lots that goes into kind of rehabilitation. And so one idea that we have is that we would like to build a test bed of a wound. We would like to basically make a scar mm -hmm. just using things that we can assemble in the lab. And we would like to then say, well, what if we have this type of intervention? What if we do something and then maybe before that scar forms, we can test some kind of strategy, some type of approach and look at the effect of that on does that scar form? Mm -hmm. And if it does, you know, is it as bad? Um, you know, how functional is that tissue uh, in the end? And so I would like to see us building towards this test bed mm -hmm. where ultimately we can develop strategies that will allow us to be able to treat wounds in all the forms that they might manifest uh, more effectively. So that's kind of a, a major th um, theme, you know, that, that I think kind of permeates or, or guides or motivates the research that we're doing in this area.